So I've never actually seen a crate that's closed exactly like this. Um, this arrived for us, oh man, almost uh, two weeks ago, I think. But we've been so busy in the rush leading up to taking a week off for the holiday and um, with a bunch of like really time sensitive projects that even though this has been sitting there taunting me, I haven't had a chance to even look at it. So what's inside this crate is, to my knowledge, the first sample that Digital Storm has sent out of their new flagship Aventum X gaming PC. And uh, it does appear as though the live stream is working. So I was just, uh, I was just checking that real quick to make sure that that was working. And this is really bizarre because it's working on YouTube through Floatplane, but doesn't seem to be working on Floatplane. Ed, can you send Luke a quick text message or give him a quick call, see if we can sort that out. I don't know how that works. Um, David, you can close that door if you don't want to listen to me. Thank you, David. So anyway, here, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Have, a, have a look at this. So I've seen a lot of crates in my day, opened a lot of crates in my day, but this one's really weird. So we got the nail gun, okay? Nail gun we've seen before. We've got the staples. Staples we've seen before. Up here, we've got more staples, but these clips, these clips are actually something that I'm not familiar with. So it appears as though they just pop off like this. This may be a very unspectacular uncrating here, which is a shame because I had like all my tools ready and everything. Had my framing hammer, my drill corded, because you know, we don't take chances when it comes to live productions, you know? That's why all of our live productions go so smoothly without any issues. And I've got my what would Gordon do crowbar. You know, I was actually so pissed the first time I figured out that someone had used this as an actual crowbar because I don't know if you guys remember this, but back when Nvidia launched like, I don't know, the 580 or something, it was like a thousand years ago, 680? It's got an Nvidia shield on it, so it must be Kepler. Um, but back when they launched it, this was like a swag, random swag item that they sent out and it used to be in great shape, but you know, I actually like it better this way. Like, battle-worn, you know? Um, let's go ahead and ah, ah. make sure you tell them that the YouTube stream and Twitch streams are both working. So like, tell them don't just unplug the server because <laughs> we are streaming. <laughs> All right, let's open this baby. So specs wise, you can pretty much guess what's in here. Um, it is, Everything to the max. I think this is something like a $7,000 US or $9,000, $8,000. I don't know. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of like closer to $10,000 than it is to $5,000 gaming system. And by the time you are looking at a gaming system that costs that much, it's hardly even really a gaming system anymore. It's just an everything system. Like what can't it do? Oh. Well, that's not what I was expecting. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but they sent all this crate, but then the box itself is actually like pretty reasonable. It's just a normal digital storm box. I guess the crate was more just out of concern for uh, it arriving in one piece, which I can relate to. We actually just got back one of our, oh my God, this is heavy. How the hell am I gonna get it out of here? Um, so we just got back one of our ROG rig reboot systems that we had sent to the winner and that thing is bad. Actually, you know what, Ed, can you fire Ivan a message? Tell him to bring that 2080 Ti down here. Man, we have some, we have some tech gore for you guys. Uh, it just got absolutely savaged during shipping. It's like tragic to look at actually. Um, to say that it was dropped would be an understatement. Really, really disappointing. I mean, the winner is also disappointed because it means they don't have their system yet. We've got to file a claim, blah, 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 blah. Really, really sucks. Crappy situation all around. But um, basically what happened was the, uh, the, the, graphic, the RAM came loose and like banged around inside it. 
And then the, uh, so that, <laughs> leading us back to our um, secret shopper, talking about how common it is for RAM to come loose in shipping. There you go. Literally just happened to us, except instead of just coming loose a little bit, it came out. There's like dents, like it looks like someone shot the back of the video card with a BB gun, and then the graphics card ripped out of the slot. So the PCI Express connector is pretty mangled. Oh my God, what the hell? How is a system this heavy? Ah! Come on, oh you, you bastard. <laughs> What? Yeah, no, no, I got this. Don't worry. It's fine. Ah, come on. Just need it on the tipping point. Ah, there we go. Wow, it's so bottom heavy. Like, look at this. Look how far I have it tipped over. That is still going to go backwards. That's how heavy this system is. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Let's see if we can get it out now. Oh, come on. Okay, maybe if we can kind of walk it a little, get it free of that uh, piece of foam on the bottom. That's why the crate's so big. So you can, you can get in there with your system because you'll be so excited to have it. You'll just want to like, you know, snuggle it or something. I don't know. Just making stuff up. I'm just stalling for time at this point. Long time viewers will be familiar with this strategy of mine. Just, because uh, that used to be half of the video back when the channel was mostly unboxings was me babbling while I figure out how to open packaging. Because it's all complicated. It's all different, you know. Uh, come on. <laughs> It's so heavy, like I can't lift it to slide it really. Just have to keep working it out. Okay, get free. Okay. Um, one second. Watch my toes, no, my, my toes are fine, thank you. I got it, just need to, come on. Need some leverage. Just gonna lever it up. Just get in there. Nope. Yeah. Oh, come on. It's so heavy. Okay, so if you order one of these, I'd recommend having your butler help you open it. Because let's face it, if you order one of these, you probably have a butler. Oh! Holy crap, like, Brandon, can you get a sense watching me move this thing around for how heavy it is? I wish I had a scale or something so we could quantify this. Now, I brought this table over here to put it on, but I think we might have a problem. Ah. Uh, I might need a different table. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, uh, here, Ivan, do you wanna throw this on here? This is just, this is just sad. He brought the whole system down. So a couple things, check this out. That is the battery holder for the motherboard. How we came to be in possession of the battery holder for the motherboard. Um, well, that's a tale that's not for the weak of heart. So first of all, we found the RAM here and Ivan got a little confused because he was like, did we just put like an extra heat spreader there as a decoration? No, sirs and madams, we did not do such a thing. It came out of the slot and ended up there. So check this out. Uh, do we know what caused that? Is that the RAM Graphics bouncing card. around? Graphics card, that's yeah. a bummer. Okay, hold on, hold on, don't, don't skip to the finale yet. Check this out. This PCI Express slot is coming down at an angle here and you can see the bottom part of it has actually been sheared off. See that? See these little pieces coming free here? Um, we have some like abrasion marks here on the uh, chipset heatsink. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, none of this really looks that bad. Uh, this, this is where things get really ugly. So uh, people, people have often asked me why I'll talk about, like why I whine, I used to whine and harp on the packing materials in case boxes back in the day when I'd unbox them. And it's because system integrators build systems in them, then they use those boxes to ship the completed system. And if your box isn't overbuilt, if it's designed only for the case, this is what happens. This is how you get dead graphics cards. Now, Digital Storm, they're going a little over the top here, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, but come in, come have a look at this. So the top of the PCI bracket here, you can see has been bent, but not nearly as bad as the bottom. So this is bent so far that the graphics card was able to rip free from the slot, and it pulled the threading out of these thumb screws, because that's how heavy these RTX cards are. And this, this is where we're really running into trouble. This is where this card goes from, maybe we could still get it to work, just replace the PCI bracket, to this card is never going to ray trace anything again. You can see that the contact fingers along the PCI Express slot here, two of them here on the power section, have been sheared clean off, or not quite clean off. One of them's completely off, the other one's almost off. And, uh, the other side's not nearly as bad, but if you look down the card, you should be able to see that this back plate, can you, can you see right down the card? Yeah. This back plate is bent, and this slot, or the, excuse me, this, uh, these fingers, this tab goes over this way. So this is one dead as a doornail RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, I can't promise you won't get banned for it because of the spam spam protection bot that we have, but uh, I wouldn't blame you for pressing F because that thing is done. Um, yeah, it's okay. We don't so have to. Oh, right. Yeah, there's one more thing that happened. So we're going to make the argument that this was mistreated by the courier because how exactly is it that through this much spacing you would get a dent on the back of a case like that? Um, Probably complete and utter carelessness. So, yeah, thanks, Ivan. Um, sorry to be a total downer on our first stream after the break here, you guys. But uh, you know, just wanted to share that share that sad story with y'all. Uh, it looks like is Floatplane streaming working now? Yeah, it looks like it's working, right, Ed? Yeah. Uh, do we know what the issue was? No. No. Okay. <laughs> so it just started working. Oh, Luke got it working. Okay, cool. All right. Oh. Now let's have a look. Now, that's another thing that I always worry about when we do these live unboxings is I don't know that this actually arrived safely. Like if you talk to uh, you talk to the BS Mods guys, for example, we've worked with them a fair bit, and there's a reason that they actually hand deliver their mods to almost every trade show. Everyone that I'm aware of, now that I think of it, PDX, uh, CES, they just, they just drive their systems there. Because even packed in a crate, when you've got a really heavy system that's a little bit fragile, because like it's modded, it's not uh, you know, out of the box that way. When you've got a really heavy system, stuff can happen. Even a small bump is a lot of inertia. Or like a lot of momentum that you have to stop. I mean, I guess inertia and momentum, they're sort of related. It doesn't matter. Look, scientists watching this, do I look like a scientist to you? Look at this footwear. All right. Oh my God, this tape. It's like double layers of like the heaviest packing tape I've ever seen. But I'm not going to harp on them for overpacking it. Like I said, it's just kind of a pain in the ass for me right now. <laughs> there we go. Oof. All right, so first things first, it looks like they actually went for the sort of reasonable option for the power supply, the AX1200i. Now it's still 
a 1200 watt AXI series Corsair power supply, which means it's all digital and blah, blah, titanium efficiency or whatever. Um, is, is it titanium, the 1200i? I, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But um, it's not the 1600i, like the flagship one, because that actually is unnecessary for basically any system. We've got our RGB controller remote. I'm gonna hold on to that for later. We've got our copy of Microsoft Windows 10 Pro. Gone full pro on our windows here. We've got our accessories, including a power cord. Um, so yeah, this is just all the random accessories for our uh, Maximus 11. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's really weird. I had thought, interesting. I had thought that they were sending over a 7980 or 9980 XE configuration but they've actually gone pure gamer on this one rather than trying to make it sort of a do-all that ends up giving up some gaming performance in order to get better workstation performance by throwing a bunch of you know, cores that you don't need for gaming in it. Fascinating. Okay, so we've got it on the this side up, but there is now no way to remove the system other than to turn it this side down. So, we're gonna do that. Oh, one sec. Now, a big part of the weight of this thing is the cooling. I've actually seen a prototype of this before, but not in a video, uh, or at least not one that uh, went up on our channel, and I didn't really get long to spend with it. Oh because it was part of like uh, an Intel contest or something. Okay, even the box is heavy. Let's have a look at this thing. This is like a really, really heavy box. Like it's got a lot of strength to it. Interesting. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The box fetish can wait. All right, nice thick foam. Although I can see why they created this because even with this really heavy closed cell foam, I could see this thing stopping too suddenly and shaking something loose. I sincerely hope that didn't happen. I'm sure, I'm sure if any of the Digital Storm guys are watching right now, they're like, <gasps> that's the last thing we need right now. <gasps> Broken system delivered in a live stream. <gasps> oh man, so. Interesting, it looks like they've done one of their trademark, come on in here, Brandon, one of their trademark automotive grade paint finishes and they have done, so far, one hell of a job of it. That is, like, that is basically perfect. Look at that, not bad. Now, not cheap, <laughs> but not bad. That's okay, I mean, you know, you, when you have something this expensive, you wanna make sure that uh, you take care of it okay, so I want you to get your butler to go ahead and, you know, buff it every once in a while, okay? Is butler the PC term, or is that out, kinda like secretary? Assistant. assistant, PA? I think they're called PAs now, right? Personal assistants? Assistant, okay, so butler, butler's out. That's an archaic term? Okay. Wow, it's like monolithic. What the hell am I gonna do with it now? Okay, uh, Ed, we actually have a problem. I don't have anywhere to put, do you think I can put it on this table? No. Maybe, maybe if we go real smooth. Hold on, hold on. I mean, think about it. This way. One way or another, we're giving the people what they want. They either want to see the system or they want to see it drop. So, there's no bad result, really. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, maybe that was it. Okay. Um, 
I actually am not sure if I can lift this myself, Ed. Give me a sec. I kind of injured my knee about a month ago playing badminton, and it's hard to lift with the legs. Oh my God, that's heavy. No, I need help. Nick, fast. What's Nick's here, it's fine. Take an end. No, no, just, just an end, just an end, just an end. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. I'm just not completely good. We're putting it on that table that you just... Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. Oh, okay. Holy shit. Wow, that's a... Uh, oh. That's a big mother. How the hell could a system be that heavy? I was kind of hoping, like... Some of it was the box and stuff. Uh, we're live right now, by the way, Nick. Yeah, I know, you have like 47,000 people. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, oh my God. Okay. It's just all dark. Like we can't, we can't even really see anything. Um, okay, just a sec, I'm gonna kind of twist it over here so we can do one side at a time. It's easier to lift the table than it is to move the system. Just gonna make sure there's no strain on the legs here or anything like that. So uh, I accidentally ended up with us looking at the backside. Um, what do the people in chat want? Do you guys want me to pop the panels and give you a look at it first? Or do you want me to fire it up and, and illuminate it and then we'll look at it that way? Guys, let, let me know in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna start undoing these screws in case that's what you'd like to see. Holy crap, like the amount of cooling in this thing. That is where we are running into our, you know, little too much Christmas dinner weight gain problem we got over here. I mean, that and these gigantic pieces of tempered glass are not helping things. So I'm gonna hold that on with my head. Now that's using your noggin. Hey, I'm sorry. Okay. What do they want? What do the people want? Ed, you gotta help me out. You're in the control room, Ed. Pop the panels. Pop the panels. I knew you guys were gonna want me to pop the panels. <gasps> Look at it. Now some people appreciate the simplicity of a Mac. I appreciate having features and cooling. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> To each their own, right? Okay, so what we've got back here is some ridiculous stuff. So things that would normally be cooled, like down here, we've got a dual 140 millimeter radiator with a couple of digital storms. These look like Corsairs. They've gotta be Corsair fans that they've like kind of put their own badging on. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna use my phone as a mirror and see if the hub has a Corsair logo on it. it. Oh, it's got Corsair, yeah, these, well, no, no, Corsair Link works with any fan, yeah. Uh, I just wanna get a look at it if I can. It's really hard though. The angle is not conducive to me seeing, go away, Bixby! Not now, Bixby! <laughs> I'm pressing the Bixby button trying to get in there. <laughs> You know, you gotta know when you're not wanted, Bixby. It's not a good time, okay? Yeah, I can't, I can't see it right now, but they look like Corsair rebrands that they've just put their own sticker on, which is not a bad thing. Uh, so that's normal. What's not normal is that we've got this cooling fan that, remember, is almost right up against the glass panel. So it's kind of just recirculating air, cooling, I mean, hell, I don't know, um, this Corsair Link controller module, and then we've got this one that is actually dedicated, can, can you see this, Brandon? Come get an angle at this, on this. That's actually dedicated to the back of the CPU where it mounts to the motherboard. Um, because some motherboards actually do have heat sinks or VRM components back there, and normally they wouldn't get any cooling other than what they get through the copper material that the motherboard is made of, conducting heat away from them to somewhere where there is a fan or there is a heat sink. So they've got a fan that just blows down on that. That's it. That's all it does. That's all this fan exists to do, a 140 millimeter cooling fan. All right, then they've got some other really cool stuff here. And this, oh, I can already tell. This has got a, oh, that was close. <laughs> I'm gonna move this. I bumped it when I was, uh, it's okay, I caught it, it's fine. Um, so this has got an uh, RGB strip down it. And this is one of the coolest things that I have 
ever seen done. So uh, we showed off um, the Spectre. Uh, Spectre case that you could get with a similar kind of design, but this is that on steroids. So this is a water distribution panel that will be illuminated from the side that basically brings water from up here, wherever that goes. They've got this fascia piece that's making it kind of hard for me to see. So they've got a water distribution a block here that takes it from the top to the bottom of the system and then comes out wherever they need cooling throughout the rest of the system. Really cool stuff. They've also got this like power distribution PCB that they've created. This is their own custom PCB up here that I'm not sure exactly what it does, but um, we're gonna go ahead and pop this panel back on. In then meantime, we're gonna. How many people are watching? Uh, how many people are watching? 57,000. 57,000, is that a record? That might, be, that might be a record. Oh, we should probably uh, cover our sponsor. Uh, uh, who, who's the first one? Uh, Memory Express. Uh, what are my talking points? Is it about their new store in Victoria or their Uber price beat guarantee that uh, allows them to beat uh, authorized Canadian retail prices both online and in store by 10% of the difference? Go check out Memory Express at the link in the video description. Um, not now, not now. We can, we can do that later. For now, I really want to get this thing flipped around and I really need to focus on uh, doing it safely because I don't want to ruin this thing. So this is not gonna be the full review of this system. Um, it's just that this has been sitting here kind of staring me in the face and it's been in this epic crate and I really wanted to open it on camera and we haven't had a good opportunity so I figured we'll do a stream um, and then we will spend some real quality time with this thing evaluating whether the 48 pounds of cooling or whatever it is they have in this thing is actually worthwhile or whether it is pure, pure status symbol. I mean, at this point, why not both, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Sorry guys, it's just, it's taken me a little while to turn it around. I just need to be really careful. This thing is probably almost or as heavy as the mineral oil cooled machine there to give you guys some freaking idea. Like it weighs almost the same as that, I swear to you. It's unreal. Okay, am I turned around enough? You got a good angle? You got light? All right, so now we get to see the goodies. Oh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's not just any system. That, uh, that I can get sort of feeling anticipation for these days. Because I've seen a lot of gaming systems at this point. But the ones that combine being a gaming system with craftsmanship or art, uh, like the retro one that Intel had done up, those are the ones that are really exciting for me. So here we are. This is how their water distribution panel works. So what it does is instead of running all the tubing bends sort of up through the system, obstructing the view of the reservoir or the cards or whatever else, they've gone with this approach that allows them to have these straight runs that go down to exactly where they're needed. So we've got our, they're not labeled, but our inlet and outlet, one or the other, for our CPU. Then we've got an, can't tell, doesn't seem to matter. Once I flick it on, I'll be able to tell, but we've got our inlet and outlet for our graphics card. So these are uh, plumbed up in serial. So it's gonna go into one, then it's gonna go through that block, over to the other through this channel that is machined out of this solid block of acrylic here. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's com completely clear. Look at this. Come, 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 come. Look at this. They've done such a magnificent job of bringing this out and polishing the insides of it. This is a, an EK water block distribution block here. So it goes all the way over to the other card, through that, and then out the other side. And then this this is what they're using their panel for. So it's actually a pass-through. Brandon, you're gonna have to get low here. This is gonna be a little bit challenging for you. But can you see up there? So that, that panel is just passing through the cables from the back to the front, and then they're using their own custom, uh, individually sleeved and combed modular cables in order to access the graphics cards here. Huh. Now in terms of the spec, like I said, they actually haven't gone that crazy. So these are 2080 Ti's. Like I'm not saying this is a low end machine. This is as fast as it gets, uh, short of, you know, if you wanna spend a, well, I mean, 
Okay, you can afford one of these. Maybe you do go RTX Titans. I don't know. Anyway, they're not, it's not quite, but when they built it, it definitely was. But then they've gone presumably 9900K, and then they've actually gone for 3000 megahertz, 32 gigs of uh, just G-Skill Trident Z RGB. Like, tried, tried, tested, and true RGB memory. That's it. That's all. Like, no, you know, 128 gigs of RAM or, or anything stupid like that. All right, now cooling. I told you I was gonna talk about the cooling system. So we had that dual 140 millimeter rad on the back. In the top, we have what appears to be a one, two, shh, you gotta be kidding me. How many is this? Oh, I love this. Oh, come over here. Okay, oh, this is gonna be really hard to see, Brandon, I'm sorry. You gotta get down, you gotta get down, get low, get low, get low, get low, check this out, that is how that radiator is plumbed. They've got another one of their distribution blocks for it here. So that's the end, and the, or that's the, the butt end, and then this is the tubing end. So it comes out into this, and then goes out the back into that, back, that water back plane there. That is unreal. So that's a triple 140. We are now up to five 144 millimeter rads worth of cooling capacity. And it gets better, my friends, because down here, in a design that actually really reminds me of my old TJ07, down here, they've got a quad 140 millimeter radiator. And these are like, these aren't, the, this, really, this is a really funny design decision. Instead of going with the loose fin arrangement that is more optimized for slowly running fans and like okay temperatures, They've got a tight fin arrangement that is more optimized for faster RPM fans and just extremely low temps. Uh, they've gone with a D5 pump and res combo down here. So that's running there. They haven't gone with any fancy pantsy um, like coolant colorants or anything like that. Those are stupid anyway. Um, they eventually gunk up always, so you just kind of shouldn't use them. Water is the way to go. Uh, in terms of boot drive, I can't see what they've put in, but they did throw in a mechanical hard drive up here. I don't know what that is. Doesn't really matter. Point is, let's find out how much RGB this sucker has, shall we? What do you guys think? Let's do it. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, no, I got one more thing to show you. Brandon, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. I'm counting on your excellent camera work here. But can you tell that basically the entire back of this thing is mesh? Mesh for the power supply. Mesh for the back of these radiators that are blowing in towards each other, as far as I can tell. So it's just going to be passively exhausting out the back. Mesh here, mesh here, mesh up here. It's all mesh. It's all mesh. It's gorgeous. So all the cooling actually happens at the back because the front, as you guys might recall, is just that automotive finish. And then both sides are tempered glass. You know what? I'm going to fire it up with this side off so we can see it full brightness because these are actually kind of... Um, like a, oh crap, what's it called? Not, not, not tinted, but like a, um, not darkened, smoked. These are a smoked style of glass. So yes, tinting would be sort of an accurate word, but smoky is what the appearance looks like. So what that does is it kind of, it dulls the RGB glare a little bit, but still obviously gives you the personalization that you clearly desire because you got RGB stuff. Um, I'm having fun. <laughs> Oh, I cut myself. That's okay. You can never deny that sweat, blood, and tears have gone into this channel. Now, we're not actually going to do any benchmarks or anything today. That is not the objective of this stream. We're going to save all of that for the full review. But I do want to just see it. Now, is there RGB built into the blocks? That is something that I do want to know. And I do think there is. Oh, hilarious. Check this out. So the cable management for it is actually quite tidy. But they've pulled right off of this RGB header up here on the top of the board. And then they've pulled off of a separate one for the, from the bottom of the board. And each of these blocks is individually RGB lit all along, uh, I believe it's the back here. Or it could also be the bottom. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's fire it up. Let's fire it up. Ah, uh, where's the button? Ready? Whoo! Oh! No, it's okay. It's fine. It's an Asus double post thing. They always do that. Okay. Or a triple post thing. Come on, baby. There you go. You got to get all that RGB initiated. <laughs> Come look at these cards! 
Is that something else or what? Oh man, it's like having a neon sign in your graphics card slot. It's a thing of beauty. If you're into that sort of thing. Oh man, I love it. So, oh, where's, uh, where'd I put the remote? I think I stashed, uh, I stashed the RGB remote somewhere. So I'm not even sure which lights uh, this remote controls, because it won't be the ones through the motherboard. Uh, that's all going to be controlled by ASUS's RSync application. So that'll control the RAM and the graphics cards. And then the fans, I guess that would be through Corsair Link? I don't know. Oh, okay. And then, so you've actually got like a multi-zone kind of effect here. So you've got... Holy crap, no, I lied. The front of the case does have ventilation. You've got another four bloody 140 mil fans in there. Are those 140s or 120s? I can't tell. I think they might be 120s actually. It's really, really hard for me to tell from here. Might be 140s and 120s. It looks like these three are 140s and that one's a 120 or maybe it's offset, doesn't matter. The point is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Conveniently, they're all lit up for me. 12, 13, 14, 15, this thing has 15 fans in it, not even counting the power supply fan and the pump, which is arguably a fan. They're very similar in their design. Uh, okay, so you've got multi-zone lighting. So you can control your video cards, which I love the way that they've hooked that directly up to the RGB ports on the motherboard. Uh, you can control your RAM through the ASUS software. You can control your Corsair fans through their Link software. Then you've got your, like, sort of your back, your base mode lighting. So you got your green, your red, your blue. I like it in green. I think that's looking straight Christmassy. I mean, season's kind of over, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the, uh, the smoke panel on because I've already seen a peek at the back, and that looks really, really good. <laughs> oh. How hard is this to capture, Brandon? It's really shiny. It's okay? Now that is a machine for someone with their own butler. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, personal assistant, thank you. We always try to be very PC here at Linus Tech Tips. Get it? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't care. No more dad jokes in 2018. Yeah, yeah, no more. Oh, you think that's my New Year's resolution? <laughs> that is the last New Year's resolution. I'm resolving to tell more dad jokes in 2019. All right, so this gives us a nice look at our, uh, our smoky, our, our smoky color scheme here, or our smoky panel. You've got to come have a look at the back, though, because that. Uh, that water distribution panel that I was telling you was gonna look really good. Uh, spoiler alert, it looks better than I thought. So it's all illuminated on this side and it just catches. All, like, maybe I'm a freak, but I just find a certain beauty in CNC machine work. And just all those, all those like those bolt holes and catching the light like that, it just has like an industrial beauty to me. I absolutely love it. Um, and again, so that zone is controlled in the same as sort of our base case lighting along with all the digital storm logos and Eventimex branding and all that good stuff. Do you want to look at the lights off? Uh, oh, people want to see with the lights off? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know if we want to go off, but maybe I'll uh, dial them down a little bit. Um, I think that one's only on or off, isn't it, Brandon? The one with the big ballast? Okay, so we might have to kill, uh, that, kill that one. And then let's see what happens as we dial back the other ones here. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I, I didn't even think of that before we started. Uh, how's your lighting, Brandon? Uh, yeah. Okay. We can call that good. So I am really excited to see what kind of numbers this thing can pump out, what kind of cooling. I mean, this water should be damn near ambient temperature, like... No matter how much heat you throw at, what is it, six plus three, nine by 140 millimeters worth of radiators. I mean, that's why this thing is so heavy. It's full of water. Like, that's why it weighs as much as an immersion-cooled system. They're both full of, I mean, that's mineral oil, this is water, but you get the point. Change it to red. Change it to red? Oh, sorry, guys. There we go. How's that? You like that better? You like it? Here, I'll show you all the colors. 
But you know, I'm, I'm not partial to the blue. Not that big on the blue. Although it kind of works with the, uh, the yellow scheme that they've apparently pre-programmed. No, no, these are cycling. We could just go like full rainbow mode. Oh wow, no, it really does. It has, a, it has a, a, a unicorn barf setting. They're individually addressable. Wow. Well, let's turn up the speed then. Why not go full dance party? Oh, that is hard to look at. It's like taking the Mona Lisa and like, wow. well, putting RGB on it. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing you can't make tacky with individually addressable RGB strips, right? <laughs> Oh man, uh, well I think that pretty much, I think that pretty much wraps it for our stream today. Uh, yeah, I should probably talk to some of my wonderful super chat contributors, contributors over there. I also want to, uh, I also want to tell you about our, our sponsor for the video today, which is loading right now for me. Give her, give her a, give her a second. Oh, PIA, private internet access. Okay, well I don't have any specific talking points for PIA because uh, our program isn't really like that. So private internet access, it's a good VPN, it's affordable. Uh, you should go check it out at the link below and sign up, it's, it's great. Uh, oh, also Ed wants me to talk about our merch store, which I'm wearing this shirt, Ed, I'm already wearing it, it's literally right here. He throws me, he throws me a shirt to show off to you guys, that's literally the shirt I'm wearing. Here you go, smart guy. Uh, LTTstore.com, uh, we've got our new store. This surprised me, Ed, this is our second top selling design. Even though the only thing that's LTT about it is this like really subtle um, thing in the constellation, wanna throw the lights back on? Uh, thing in the constellation, and then our, our sort of new age circle logo here on the back by the neckline. That's the only thing that's LTT about it. Other than that, it's just like a cool shirt, it's comfortable, it's American apparel. LTT. Oh yeah, sorry Brandon, here you go. L-T-T, that's it. That's the only LTT-ness. So you can, it's pretty much like you can support us, but you don't actually have to like put the brand right across your chest like you're a NASCAR driver or something. If you like the brand across your chest though, these are our, uh, these are our second, our, these are our third and fourth, with the black of this design being the top selling one right now. So this is the circuit board logo that I've been wearing for the last few months that uh, people haven't had anywhere to buy because we've been working on completely revamping the store for quite a while now. So it's lttstore.com. You guys can go check that out in the link below. And that's it. We'll see you guys in like a few hours on WAN Show. And I'm gonna, oh no, I haven't talked to my Super Chat peeps. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, hand this over to Alex for the full review treatment here. I just, just a mad shout out to like everyone, not just Super Chat people, like holy crap, we had 60,000 people watching this live stream, that's like, I don't know, what, what's comparable to that? It's like, uh, I don't know, that, that's a lot. Joe Rogan yesterday had 65,000. Joe Rogan had 65,000 yesterday? Okay, so what you're saying is I still suck compared to Joe Rogan. What thanks, thanks Nick, that, very supportive. That's one of the biggest at 62, I All right, so that's it for the live stream. I still suck compared to Joe Rogan, <laughs> but that's okay. See you guys. Uh, see you guys next time. Ed, do you want to stop it? Oh, right, the super chats. <laughs> also, did you know we we death hugged uh, Digital Storm site? We killed Digital Storm site. Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing I preloaded this page just in case I needed to figure out something about the Event MX. This is a misrepresentation of the box, Digital Storm. It is much larger and heavier than this. <laughs> just throwing that out there, you guys. Good try, but you'll never get the wool over my eyes. Um, <laughs> So uh, Super Chats, uh, Chris F says something about entering to win the contest for the computer. Oh, there is actually a contest for the computer that might not be BS. It's their Gamer Days thing. So they might have death hugged their own site by posting in the chat to go there. Maybe, um, maybe, yeah. Uh, who is it? Uh, oh, there's actually not a, lot of, uh, there's not a lot of Super Chats today. A lot of new members. But yeah, there's like nothing really loading, so. Uh, I guess there I aren't any. Load separately. There was quite a few. Oh, there were quite a Not few. Video. I'm sorry, guys. They're uh, they're broken. Um, if you refresh it. Maybe. Yeah, there's only like six. Um, okay. okay. All right. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Kill it, Ed. I'm just standing here awkwardly. Is it dead?